Yeah, look, thanks, Tim. Um, happy to be here. Uh, look, I believe uh, 3D oil uh, really is uh, unique in the oil and gas sector in Australia at the moment. Uh, we're probably, arguably, the last <clears throat> small guy operating in the offshore of Australia, actively, that is. Um, we've built up a world-class portfolio, and our strategy is basically to get in early where the big boys play. Um, and I, I really believe that we offer more upside uh, to our shareholders than most other small oil and gas companies listed on Australia. Next slide. I'm not the first uh, MD to basically believe my uh, there's a disconnect between what our assets are and our market cap. Look, the first thing I'd like to say is that uh, we, we have, we've raised very little capital over the last uh, 14 or so years, so we raised $3 million. Uh, we only have 265 million shares on issue. In the last uh, 15 or so years, we've participated in about at least $150 million worth of offshore exploration. We've largely done that by doing deals and basically using other companies, large companies' money to go explore. And in our pipeline coming up now, we've got plenty of activity uh, uh, coming up and uh, deals in, in train as we speak. Um, stock is tightly held. And you see I'm the largest shareholder, the top 20 holders are around 60%. Can we move uh, to the next slide, please? So, um, as I said, we, we've got a world-class portfolio. In fact, um, 3D oil is one of the, is up there with the top uh, acreage holders in the offshore of Australia. We, on in terms of res prospective resources, we have over three TCF and uh, almost 400 million barrels. Um, our skill, we, we, what, what, what we do, we do it well. We basically identify areas early in the offshore, uh, move quickly, uh, work them up, and then basically try to do deals with larger majors. Uh, we <clears throat> recently did that with Conoco Phillips in our block in Tasmania, T4UIP. We picked it up some years ago. Uh, we added value by shooting seismic. And we completed a deal with them just over two years ago, which is probably one of the best farmhouse deals we've seen in Australia in a couple of decades. Uh, they have just completed uh, acquisition of almost 2,000 kilometres of seismic in T49P. We're looking for gas down there and we're looking for large gas. Uh, we're in the process now of um, receiving that data, interpreting it, and the plan is to basically drill an exploration well next year. In that deal we did with uh, Conoco, uh, they will carry us for the first $30 million US for this well next year. We were also given, uh, as part of the deal, a $5 million bonus, sign-on bonus by them. Um, in terms of our, um, our gas prospects, we have a, we've assembled a really, really large portfolio of gas prospects in the right place down on the, down on the southern margin there within the Otway and the Gippsland Basin. Um, we recently picked up a block, uh, well, like weeks ago in Otway with 161 BCF um, a prospect. Within, uh, flat, within T49P, we currently have a prospect of 1.6 TCF ready to drill, but we have a prospective resource down there of about 10 TCF. We also have um, assets in the Gippsland too with significant potential. Now, the other exciting thing for us at the moment is we, we picked up a block in uh, what's now one of the hottest basins in Australia, well, the hottest, if not maybe the world, uh, the Badoo. Um, Santos announced <coughs> a discovery this week there, Parvo. Parvo was right next to the, the block, our block 527. Parvo is very exciting for us and we'll have a look at why that is exciting for us and why it's exciting for the industry uh, going forward. Next slide. So this is our portfolio uh, of acreage, starting over at the west. We have 527, it's a rather large block, unexplored, 6,000 square kilometres adjacent to Dorado and, um, and Parvo. Uh, Dorado and Parvo are the largest discoveries in Australia of oil in three decades, probably. Um, we have this block 100%. Um, coming over to uh, the east coast, uh, T49P, since that's in Victoria, it's actually in Tasmanian waters. As I've already said, we, we completed a deal with Conoco there two years ago. 
We're at 20% in that block uh, with a well coming up next year. Big P79 is our latest addition to our portfolio. It's another large block. In fact, uh, I think 3D Oil now has about 60% of the Otway, offshore Otway Basin. We've got a ready to drill prospect there, Vanguard. Uh, we've already got people knocking at our door in regard to that. Um, and in Gippsland, uh, we have a, a permit with our partners, Hibiscus, Vic P74, adjacent to the largest uh, oil field in Australia, Kingfish. Uh, despite that, it's reasonably unexplored, and we'll have a look at that too. So, next slide. So, basically, what we do, we do well. We basically identify assets early, uh, identified T4 UIP quite some time ago, uh, 2013. Um, completed the deal Conoco two years ago. Big P79, we identified a very, very low risk target only recently. And as I said, we were already in conversations with a number of pie, large parties on a deal in that block. 527, uh, we acquired this block prior to Dorado. Uh, we acquired it for uh, not a significant work program and we've been adding value while <laughs> we've been seeing value added by drilling by Santos uh, right next to us. Uh, and if players are trying to get, get, get into this new emerging basin, you know, we're arguably the only place to enter, enter now with the prospectivity of, of what we've seen in Toronto and Parvo. Uh, next slide, please. So this is T49P. It sits to the uh, the west of uh, King um, of King Island. It's a large block of about four thousand square kilometres. It's uh, it's it has been largely unexplored. What I really like about this block, and I think it's important to note, is it is it is, it is frontier. It's, it's a frontier, but yet it's in shallow water, um, and it's near uh, it's near. Um, Infrastructure and it's close, that actually uh, feeds the East Coast gas market. I, I, I believe this, you know, it, look, it's so much better than, say, the Beetaloo, which is so far away and unconventional. Delivering gas from the Altway Basin is the cheapest gas you'll get into the East Coast market. We completed uh, last year a large survey, in fact, the largest survey in the Otway ever carried out um, by Conoco. Again, I reiterate, we, we can, uh, contributed nothing to that. We are now processing that data in Houston and we will be seeing that data shortly. Very exciting. These are large features down here. And in my view, you know, this could really uh, change up the East Coast gas market if it's successful. Um, at, we are planning to drill uh, in 2023 with uh, Conoco and again, uh, they will carry the first $30 million of this well. Next slide, please. So, Big P79, another very large block in the Otway Basin. Uh, the prospect there, which is down the bottom called Vanguard, we identified uh, and we bid aggressively. We bid a well in the primary term. It's next to Beach's uh, Geograph and Thylacine, the largest uh, field in the basin. Uh, we also have a number of other prospects near Labella, and we also have a lot of area in the, to the west, uh, which gives us plenty of running room to explore this block. Again, we have 100%, and um, we are talking to parties currently on um, progressing a deal on that block to drill a well next year, hopefully. Uh, next slide. So look, this for the layman is probably not that exciting, but to geophysicists, this is very exciting. One of, one of the things you see in the Otway is that uh, in the last two decades, if um, wells are drilled on, on traps that have amplitude anomalies and flat spots and DHIs, sorry about the terminology, we have seen a 100% success rate in the basin. And that's what we see at Vanguard. We see flat spots, you can see on that slide there, and we see DHIs, direct hydrocarbon indicators. Um, so it's a very, very low risk prospect. Uh, we're very excited about, and I think we've been very conservative in our estimates of uh, prospective resources. And again, in addition to that, we have some other prospects and we still yet to really work the west part of this block as we have, uh, to date. Next slide, please. Uh, one further block we have in this part of the world is uh, Vic P74, another large block in Gippsland. 
It's located next to the largest gas field, the uh, largest oil field ever uncovered in Australia, Kingfish. Despite the fact that uh, Gippsland is a mature basin, this, this block has been largely uh, unexplored for various reasons. Um, it's been hampered by issues with data and we picked it up on a relatively low bid with hibiscus. Um, I think this block is a bit of a sleeper and uh, pretty excited about going forward on this with identified about two TCF of prospective resources. Next slide, please. Just a little bit on the gas markets on the East Coast. I mean, it's, you know, it's the topic of the day. I, I, I strongly believe that gas has a, a pretty strong future for a couple of decades at least. Um, with the coal-fired power stations being decommissioned, really gas is the only energy on demand, um, uh, uh, energy on demand that's reliable. And we'll, I think we'll see gas continue to grow. Looking at the ACCC's predictions there, you can see there's a big gap between supply and demand. And in the light purple, you'll also see that basically a lot of that demand is for, uh, predicated on the developments that actually haven't happened to date yet. Next slide, please. So a bit of a confusing slide this one, and it's a bit counterintuitive, but it basically is saying that East Coast gas prices have been largely over recent years controlled by LNG prices out of Queensland through uh, the Mullumbilla hub. But despite that fact, what we're seeing is the uh, the, the the LNG potential, uh, the LNG export gas, some of it coming down to, to the East Coast, it's not happening, it's getting, it's declining. So we have this irony that the prices are, are controlled by that the hub there, which give us good prices, but their their ability to service the East Coast is declining. So it's up to you know companies like 3D Oil to fill that gap. Of course, Bass Strait and Exxon, uh, their their production is falling over a cliff as we speak. There's a lot of room to move and uh, to to grow into this gas market. So next slide, please. So I apologise. This is a rather busy slide. It's probably more for the industry than uh, for. Uh, a shareholder presentation, but what has happened this week, if people haven't been aware, there's been a, a significant discovery in the Badu in WA off Broome by Santos and Carnarvon. The discovery is called Parvo. Uh, Parvo is uh, further east than uh, to the Dorado discovery made two years ago by Santos. Um, it's very exciting, uh, this discovery, because it basically shows that Dorado wasn't a one-off. And what we're seeing here in the Bidu is the emergence of a really, really rich basin. And it's got a long way to go. Uh, we picked up our block 527 before Dorado. It's 4,000 square kilometers undrilled. I remember thinking at the time, you know, imagine if you go back in time and pick up you know, 4,000 square kilometers in the Carnarvon Basin. Well, that's what we did. And Parvo is very exciting for us but basically has pushed the trolling system over to our block. And if majors want to get into this basin, really there's not many other choices apart from coming and talk to us. Can we um, move on to the next slide? Again, another busy slide, but the Parvo discovery has actually uncovered a, a further kitchen, which is possibly different, um, you know, probably different to the Dorado kitchen. This kitchen is extending the trolling system further to east into our block. And the uh, the southwest corner of our block is very exciting. We have the channel system, the basic geography that we see in the Santos blocks, um, and potentially very large leads in there. So as I said, this is a very exciting area to have 100% of the block right next to one of the most significant oil discoveries in recent years is it, very exciting for us. Next slide, please. So uh, we have a lot going on at the moment. It's a pretty exciting time. Um, as we speak, uh, we have the processing of the Sequoia survey in 49. We'll be seeing that this year. It's going to be very exciting to uncover the prospects in 49P and be choosing a well location. Uh, in 79, uh, this is all moving very quickly. We, we bid a well in the primary term very aggressively. We know it, we outbid Beach in that area. Um, we have a well in the primary term, as I said, and we'll be looking to draw that next year or the year after. 527, watch this space. Um, we have a seismic survey to, to undertake this year. 
and hopefully, well, not too long after that. And in 74, again, a sleeper um, in this uh, world of uh, declining gas, it's a great place to be. Next slide. Just to summarize, uh, the Conoco deal basically really highlights uh, the sort of strategy we, we're trying to do and we will do it again. Uh, we look for, we've got high impact events uh, coming up with at least two wells. Portfolio, I believe is world-class and it's quite unique for a small company of our market cap to have such a world-class portfolio. Um, the strategy we, we, we we're doing at the moment will continue to do because it seems to work. Um, we also we, we are in the the places you want to be at the moment. You want to be in the Otway. You want to be in the Gippsland. If you want gas, the East Coast. If you want to find oil, the Vidu is a place to go. Uh, we have a tight capital structure. Uh, Two sixty five million shares in the market. Very tightly held. It doesn't. It wouldn't take very much to actually move our price significantly. And um, just to say thank you for your time. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, just my disclaimer. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you very Carl. Much. Um, Ned, we, we, we've run out of time, but we've got one quick question here, or a couple, just in relation. Oh, yeah, I apologise for being a bit long. <laughs> That's all right. There's a lot to get through. We appreciate that. Uh, other than we've got another pre uh, presenter coming up. Now this um, P seventy nine, are you close to a deal? Is there is there the possibility of fast tracking that uh, for drilling on a farm out? Well, look, we only we only picked up about four weeks ago, so uh, you know, but the phone's ringing. Okay, so I, I think we'll get we'll get something across the line on that. I mean, uh, the industry realised that prospects like this just don't come up very often, um, and I'm not sure why. We were the most aggressive bidder, but we were. Um, but you just don't get prospects like this very often uh, with beautiful flat spots. And arguably, it's the largest undrilled prospect in the way outside of our T49 permit. Okay. Now, um, we've got a couple more questions there, if you don't mind answering those. And um, good luck out there, and we'll get you back on the middle of the year. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much, Tim.